I've helped a number of people troubleshoot and install their master nodes who didn't have a lot of Linux experience. They were, they were able to follow a guide well enough, but they were running into some trouble. And in doing that, I noticed that a lot of them are not really understanding how to set up Linux to be more secure. So what I want to do in this video is just show you how you can use SSH and a firewall to make your server just a lot more secure. So the first thing we want to do is create a pair of SSH keys in, in uh, PuTTY. So when you first run PuTTY, it installs a number of programs. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new SSH key with PuTTY Gen. So go to PuTTY and find PuTTY Gen. And it will look something like this. So we are going to use an RSA key. Um, you can use the default to uh, 2048, or you can make it higher if you want. You could go with 4096. We'll just stay with 2048 for this particular case. We're going to click Generate, and you're supposed to do this while you do that. And it's created our key. It's going to ask us for a key phrase. Um, so this is this is an area where you want to put a passphrase in. Don't forget your passphrase because then you won't be able to log into your own servers. So you're going to put in a passphrase. So let's just say, I like you. I like you. And then we can save both the public key and the private key. And it will ask us where we want to save these. So I'd recommend putting them on a folder somewhere on your desktop or your documents folder where you're not going to lose them. Um, so let's say we can create documents and then create a new folder called keys. And then ID pub dot ppk. And then the private key will be saved, same thing, but without the pub. All right, that is pretty much it. So now we can close that and come into pageant and view keys. Now the keys aren't in there, so let's go ahead and add our key. And um, documents keys and then it's going to ask us for our passphrase and there it is all right now what we can do is right click on pageant and go new session so here we're going to have to put in our um, ip address so you're going to put in the first time you do this, you're going to have to log in as root. So you're going to put your root at the IP address. All right, so you can put root at and then your IP address here. And then you can, if you want, you can go ahead and save that just because, well, I'm saving it because I'm going to use it again in a minute, but you really shouldn't save it because you shouldn't be using it in real life. But um, what we're going to do is now we're going to go ahead and open that particular particular connection. It's going to ask us, are you sure? You click yes. And then it's going to ask us for our root password and it lets us log in as root. So the first thing we need to do now is we're going to add a new user. I'm going to call it crypto. So add user crypto. It's going to ask us for a password and now we've got a new a new user. So now we're going to add sudo to this particular user. So user mod minus ag means add group. So we're adding the sudo group to crypto. Then we're going to change to the crypto user su minus crypto with a space in between the minus. So it's telling us to become crypto. So now we can see that we are now crypto. Um, at this point, we need to kind of lock in the pseudo. Um, for some reason, sometimes it doesn't seem to work right unless you do this next step. So we're going to say pseudo and we're going to do something relatively um, innocuous, but that definitely requires root privileges. Um, pseudo means substitute user do. So in this case, we are doing it as the root. And then instead of having to put the root password in, you put your regular username password in. All right, so it seems to have worked. 
and we're good. All right, the next thing we're gonna do then is we are going to, um, now on a Mac, uh, now you gotta go back to your computer. Now on a Mac or a Linux computer, you can just copy your SSH key that we generated before using this particular command. But in Windows, it's a little bit more complicated. So what we are going to do is we are going to um, view our keys. Uh, no, sorry. What we're going to have to do is go to our key folder. And then we're going to open up the public key. Um, you can open it with Notepad. And it looks like this. So what we're going to do is we are just going to copy this right here. And we're going to follow the directions right over here. So we're going to make deer dot ss. Sorry. Uh, yes. So make deer dot ssh, and then nano dot ssh slash authorized keys, and then you can just paste that in there and. There you go. And you can also comment it so you could say, this is my main computer. So if you have two different computers that you access it from, you could create separate keys for each computer. It's better idea to do that than to use the same private key on multiple computers. Because if you ever lose a computer or it gets stolen, you can just disable the access from this computer by deleting that key from this file. Whereas if you use the same key on every computer, then you're going to have to um, change your keys if it gets stolen or whatever. So anyway, there you go. So now we've got that. Now what we want to do is test whether that worked or not. So we're going to open a new session. And we're going to this time, instead of logging in as root, we are going to log in as our new um, our new user and you can give that a name we'll call it crypto um, we also want to click on the ssh key there then click off and choose our private key all right come back up here and let's save that so now you can see it's saved as crypto go ahead and open and it didn't work. Okay, figured out the issue. So when I had typed this in here, I hadn't had CS or SSH dot RSA, which is the type of public key it is. So without that, it wasn't recognizing it as a public key. So typed in SSH minus RSA space, and then go ahead and close that. And now it's automatically logged in. Now, you'll notice it didn't ask me for the passphrase, and that's because we put the passphrase into pageant. So when we loaded pageant, it asked us for the passphrase. We put it in once. We never have to put it in again until we close pageant. So it's kind of nice and convenient if you're going to be logging on to a lot of servers that you don't have to keep putting in your passphrase. Now, if you're just going to leave your computer unattended, that's not so wonderful. But you know, there's always a trade-off. So if you're going to leave your computer unattended, then you should either lock it. Um, Windows L will lock your computer or you should close pageant. So it's not just letting anyone log into your SSH session with your private key and no passphrase. All right. So now that we know that that worked, the next thing we want to do, let's go ahead and close that again. The next thing we want to do is we want to test, i uh, sorry, we want to get rid of our um, ability to log in as root or as um, or with the password by itself. So what we're going to do is we are going to, you can actually do this a couple ways. You can edit the SSH configuration file, but that's not cool. What's cool is to use said. So let's go ahead and copy each of those lines. 
basically it's just looking for the permit root login yes and then it's going to replace it with permit root login no all right now we need to restart the server so we are going to use sudo service sshd restart and now we're going to test to make sure that worked so first we're going to try and log in as root again and we get no supported authentication method so that's exactly what we want root root logins are no longer permitted you can only log in with the username that you selected in this case crypto all right the next thing we want to do is we want to um see if we can do it without whoops if we can do it without uh, using the key and just using a password so let's go new session we're going to load the previous session and we are going to um, get rid of the, the public key that's still pulled in the public key Sometimes pageant is just too smart for its own good. Um, all right, let's view keys and let's remove the key temporarily. That will prevent it from using it. Okay, disconnected, no supported authentication method. That is exactly what you want to see. Now, you'll notice that in testing it, I kept this window open. If something went wrong, you want to have a way into your server. So you don't close that window until you've tested and made sure that everything works correctly. So now what we can do is go back into pageant. We can add the key back in. All right, so it'll ask you for your password, which in this case was I don't, can't spell. I don't, oh, no, it is I like you. I like you. And now, everything should be awesome. Everything is awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and finish up with, um, configuring our server so we've now we've secured ssh the next thing we want to do is install a simple firewall so now we're going to install the firewall so we're going to okay so it's actually already installed so now we can go ahead and just copy the next two lines and it will run them one at a time so the first one is limiting or sorry the first one is we're by default ufw um, doesn't allow anything to come in so the first thing we have to do is allow ssh then we're going to limit ssh which means that it will only accept six connections every 30 seconds and that is going to help prevent brute force attacks then we need to allow whatever coin we're using so let's imagine for a moment sorry um So let's imagine for a moment that the coin that we're using requires port 9999. So you're going to just replace that with whatever port you need to open. So to open that, then we're going to turn logging on so that it will let us know when something bad is happening if you look at the logs. And then the last thing we need to do is enable it. It'll ask you, are you sure this might disrupt your SSH connection? But we allowed the SSH connection, so we're going to say yes. And then the last thing we want to do is just take a look at the status. So it's going to tell you everything that's there. So um, I've actually allowed some other ports because I'm running some other things, so you don't need to worry about those. And then finally, we're going to install fail to ban, which pretty much just runs by itself. So we're going to enable it. By enabling it, that will make it so it starts at, um, at reboot. 
and then we will also start it right now. Okay, now you've go, you've done a small amount of work. The first thing we did was we created a, a new user. We um, created a pair of SSH keys for that user and we put the public key on the server. Then we disabled uh, root, uh, root logins and we also disabled password logins. We tested it, make sure it works before we close any windows. And then we um, installed a firewall and configured it. And then we installed fail to ban. You follow those simple things and you're going to have a much, much more secure Linux server and masternode. If that was helpful, please let me know. Donations are always welcome and let me know what other sorts of videos you'd like to see in the future. And I will have all of the commands that are uh, featured in this video. I'll have that in a blog post on my website. So in the video description below, you can um, just click on the link and it'll take you to the description for, or it'll take you to all of these commands. So you can just copy and paste them yourself.